Yes! Hello, hello, it's CMAT. Thank you for joining me. I am going to just be chatting this evening on the West Coast. I am going to be talking about some test results that I got when I was in Florida. For like the first half of the year, I went and visited my mom and she was, she has cancer and she was going through like different things to kind of try and like heal her cancer and she was going to try holistic, a holistic avenue because the medical system kind of sucks. Uh, modern medicine, conventional medicine isn't really reliable. So she was doing that and I had the opportunity to get some tests done myself. Um, I learned that something is wrong with my immune system. My immune system is very taxed for some reason and I'm also in my um something is making me age faster and of course this was like during this is like kind of post the the two years of covid and what and what have you so like a lot of people were really stressed out and i know and i remember like hearing a lot of people kind of like waking up one day and being like oh my gosh i look like 10 years older and they like had like their their face just like was sagging more and they had like more wrinkles and all this stuff it just like overnight it just like you look like you aged like 10 years and that's how I felt I like woke up and looked in the mirror and I was just like oh my gosh I look 10 years older <laughs> like what happened because like yesterday didn't look like this like it was very different and so I felt very um confused because there had to be a reason for this so um I was lucky enough to be able to get some tests done I got a bunch of tests done and I'm gonna go over that this evening and um then we're going to talk about a book that i read called the mucusless diet healing system um by professor arnold Eret. here it is sorry um my screen's backwards sorry <laughs> but um it's a really thin book like it's not very long um but this is the annotated version the the original version which was written by arnold Eret. it's like um, it's kind of for the academic community, it's a little bit more scientific and has a lot of more like academic and scientific jargon than the average person might have. Um, so that's why I opted for this book as well because it's much more easier to understand and it's like kind of modernized in a way like uh, Professor um, Spira is the one who did the um, annotated and revised the revised vision. So, anyways, I'm gonna talk about that, but um, I want to get into my tests. So, I went to F I went to Florida, and I like went to LifeWorks. It is like this kind of holistic healing center. A lot of people go there that have cancer and stuff, and sometimes people hear their cancer, and sometimes they don't. And um, hard to say. Like everyone's different. Some people use different. Some people like do a whole bunch of different things so it's really hard to tell like you know what healed their cancer but there's different kinds of cancers and different kinds of bodies so it's it's a subject that's um very in-depth and complex but um as far as i know i don't have cancer um i've been vegan for f about 14 years now um but like the the most of those 14 years like i like i became vegan when i was like 19 and there was like some fluctuations like i had like dairy products here and there like i had like these little relapses throughout that time um the most recent i think was i think five years ago no okay i i need to like calculate that because i remember the times that i like relapsed but um generally I've been vegan for 14 years and what and I, I didn't have a really good diet because when I, I originally went vegan um, it was really um, I didn't have any information I mean I didn't even know how to cook for myself my mom did not teach me she was not a good cook she <laughs> didn't know anything about nutrition either so like it was just I was just eating what I, somebody made me so um, but when I was 18, I went vegetarian, and then that following year, I went vegan. Um, so, I've been vegan since then, and save for, like, you know, those those relapses into, like, dairy, but I haven't had meat, save for one time, 
accidents happen and like there was a uh, ordered something that and and thought we ordered the mock meat version and they sent us the real one <laughs> so I ate like a bunch of it and I was just like wow like they really made it taste like chicken and it was <laughs> And I didn't throw up or anything, I just like sucked it up and I was like, whatever, and just drank a lot of water and I didn't die, I'm okay. <laughs> um, like when I was like way younger, I would have been super upset about it, but at that point I was like, whatever, like, just move forward. Um, so, yeah, so I'm just like kind of going over like, like how my health has like led up to this point in my life like so 14 years vegan the probably 10 years of that was like really bad like I just I didn't know anything about nutrition I didn't know anything about what to like make like it took me a while to learn how to cook and then even when I did I just like kind of made everything mush like I just didn't really understand like oh like the vegetables that I did cook we're just like a sloppy gross cooked mess like I mean when you cook food you're cooking out the nutrients and if you're using oils like oils aren't good for you either so I mean like that's how I ate and because I was working like nine to five jobs like I didn't really have the inspiration to like learn how to cook or anything or like make elaborate dishes like I would just make comfort food honestly because like when you're in that nine to five like cycle, you're just like, you're just looking for convenience. So I just did what was easy. And uh, yeah, so I sacrificed what was healthy. But I didn't really quite understand what healthy was. Um, I didn't understand how to balance meals. I didn't understand good eating habits. And it wasn't until like, I started uh, going back to school a few, like four years ago, um, that I took like a health class. Was it like, maybe three years ago, I took like a health class and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to fix my eating habits because throughout the entire time, like the majority of the time that I've been vegan, about the, about that 14 years, I hadn't eaten fruit. Like, yeah, maybe here and there, but like, I never really ate fresh fruit and I don't know why. I'm guessing it's because it just wasn't in, you know, my youth, my childhood. Like I just didn't have fruit. It was just all like meat and potatoes or like, tacos with like a little sprinkle of lettuce and like a whole bunch of sauces and stuff so like that's like that was my childhood like there was no health and nutrition in my childhood it was just like whatever um the modern diet uh which like the the food pyramid and everything that's changed over time the usda has like made several changes to the food pyramid so like um <laughs> They're kind of hard to trust at this point. But anyways, like I realized I hadn't eaten a lot of fruit and fruit is really important for nutrition, like for the human anatomy. Like it helps us cleanse and detoxify. It gives us antioxidants, like vitamin C, like all these great things that fruit does to us. And we need, I, I, after all the research that I've done in the past like five, six years, I realized that humans are predominantly frugivore they like the the thing that they need to eat the most is fruit and then like there's like some plant materials to eat as well um but no meat no no animal products at all anything that's cooked is it's terrible it's not good for the body it causes leukocytosis it's, and leukocytosis is when like your body kind of like attacks like what you put in it like so like you put the like rotting animal flesh in your body and then the your body like your your cells like begin to attack it because it's not supposed to be there and not necessarily because it's animal products which i think that's also an issue but because it's cooked it's usually got to be cooked anything that's cooked will cause leukocytosis animal products will cause leuco leukocytosis there are also certain plants and fruits that may cause leukocytosis but you know like that's where this book is like super handy. It talks about the mucusless diet, but anyways. Um, so anyways, that's kind of the backstory on like how I've been eating for the past 14 years as a vegan. I just kind of like mostly ate like burritos and tacos and pastas and breads and oh, that never made me feel good at all. Um, and so this big transition like happened like a few years ago when I took a health 
like a health and wellness class and that health and wellness class like made me set they made us all set goals and I was like you know what I'm gonna set a bunch of goals and during that time it was like the summer of that year and um that was like when I was working at a farm um on the coast and I was working at this organic farm and I was like you know what I'm going to go raw for the summer or whatever and I I also, you know, I got into so many things. That class, like, really opened me up so much. And I fixed, like, some eating habits, which I still go back on. I'm still, I'm still, like, solidifying certain eating habits. Um, But I can go over that in another time. But um, I changed a lot of things. And fruit, adding more fruit to my diet was one of them. And that's why I'm, like, on my raw vegan transition right now. But um, it's been, like sorry, I, like, was rambling off, it's, like, 11 minutes now, all I wanted to to say was that, like, my, like, 14 years of being vegan, um, I didn't eat so well, and that was, you know, a lot of different reasons, like, I just didn't know how, nutrition, like, I was doing it all alone, I didn't have, like, everything that we have now, like, that just kind of slowly trickled in, and even when, like, we did get all these, like, new options, like, you, things, like, you just kind of realize that they're not good for you all like the mock meats and stuff and all the all the fake stuff uh it's not good like I just didn't know so I didn't know anything about nutrition but I didn't know nutrition was really a thing it wasn't like a it wasn't really a topic that I had ever discussed um I because like my original reason for going vegan was for my spirituality so um health was not like kind of a focus so blah 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 uh I want to go over these test results. So I took like several different tests um, because they they wanted they wanted to test me, try to figure out like what was wrong with me, what why was my immune system taxed, why was my body aging so fast? Okay, so and we got some answers. We got some ideas. Okay, so. A lot of people say that, like, if you go vegan, you're gonna have, like, um, like, anemia and such. When I went over with all the results of, to my doctor, and there was other things that, I am not a nutritionist, (laughs) and I am not a scientist when it comes to this, so I'm just gonna repeat what she has told me, my doctor, and the person who, like, went over this with me, um, she said, I do not have any indica- there's no indication that I have anemia. None at all. My iron is fine, and then hemoglobin levels are excellent. So there's no there's no problem with my iron content. Um, I'm not quite sure how to read this this one. Hold on. I'm gonna start with something easier. <laughs> okay, but you know, like they always say, like, oh yeah, vegans don't get enough protein. Um, I don't know how it matters but I think it's I think it does matter so I I want I don't know how long it takes for certain levels to drop and rise um with all kinds of nutrients and I'm sure it's super varied so I'm just gonna like put that out there um because when I took all of these tests they were all spread out in different ways um but during that time I was with my mom like I said earlier she's she's um trying to heal her cancer and they told her not to eat fruit So, I wanted to, like, not eat fruit with her because I didn't want her to be, um, you know, struggling. Like, I wanted to show her, like, okay, like, we can do this. You can do this, and I'm going to do it with you. So, I kind of, like, showed that solidarity, and I didn't eat fruit for, like, two months. (laughs) And, um, that absolutely, absolutely must have had an impact on my results, um, but that's what I did. So, like, I couldn't go back and undo that. Like, I'd already, like, committed to doing these tests. So, keep that in mind. Um, I did not eat uh, a lot of fruit during these tests. Um, afterwards, I did. So, my antioxidant levels, they were actually low. And antioxidants are primarily found in fruits and vegetables. So, um, that would probably account for the lack of fruit that I had during that time. Now I'm eating fruit every day. I make sure to always have fresh fruit every day. Eating it in its raw form, not heating it up. Sometimes I blend it. I like smoothies. 
but I try not to. Um, so, anyways, so antioxidants were low. And you don't want your antioxidants low because that protects you from a lot of things. You have your, um, what is it? Geothine, uh, I'll, I'll figure it out. Anyways, um, moving on from antioxidants, um, I have, I'm not going to show this because it has my name on it. I can flip it like this. But, um, <laughs> My camera's flipped, so sorry. This is just for, um, okay, essential amino acids. Bloop. So these are my levels. They're actually kind of bad. <laughs> They're actually not so good. Um, so I, I also, for some reason when I went raw, I stopped eating beans, of course. Anything that I, that you would cook. And I didn't, and I didn't know, I still, I'm still learning, so I didn't know everything that I was doing. Um, I wasn't eating enough like things that could give me the protein that I needed. So I didn't have like all the sprouted like beans and uh, all the sprouted, not so much legumes, mostly like nuts and seeds. Nuts, seeds, beans. I didn't have enough sprouted of those. Um, so my levels were down. Cause I like stopped eating tofu for a really long time. Tofu has so much, so many, so many like things in it <laughs> that's super helpful especially like if, i mean if you're if you're having tofu like you're get, you're still getting like all the protein that you need um but i want to be raw so i'm trying to learn how to do that but um i had lysine levels were low and tryptophan levels were low tryptophan that affects sleep so i need to there's there's lysine and tofu so i've been eating tofu again um, until I figure out, like, what every little thing is that I need that I could find raw, like, I'm, I'm not going to, like, starve myself, because I've done that before. I realize that, um, I sometimes go at, like, a little extreme. Oh, hi, Raising Prophet, I didn't see you there. <laughs> I'm, like, so into this. I'm talking about my test results that I got, um, some time back from, um, when I was in Florida, um, for... All the tests that I got for like my nutrient, my nutrient levels, and um, yeah, all the things that I I, I got tested for, metal, heavy metals and stuff. So I'm going over protein levels right now. <laughs> so lysine, tryptophan were low. Um, I'm sure they're, I'm sure the lysine is fine now because I've been eating like tofu again. Um, then there's also leucine, valine, valine, isoleucine. Those were low too. So I need to like bring those up along with taurine. So those were like, those are amino acids that I need to make sure that I'm getting. And like I said, I was not eating beans. I was, I was raw during this time, during the testing, um, like months before the testing too. Um, so... All that, obviously, is going to show up in these tests. So, keep that in mind. Um, but also, like, use this as a guide in case, like, you know, when if you're vegan and everything like that, making sure that you're, like, what, like, what I'm doing is uh, I'm starting to look at food. Like, okay, what am I getting from this piece of food? Like, what nutrients am I getting? So, in doing that, I feel like I'm, I'm getting a lot better. So we'll, we'll talk about that more in the future. Anyways, those are like some amino acids that I need to improve upon. And... Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, so my zinc and copper is also down. And I'm pretty sure zinc is also in soy. So... I'm not too worried about that. Potassium, my potassium was down, which is kind of weird, cause I mean, there's banana, there's potassium in bananas, but it's not enough. Um, but I believe there's potassium in avocados, and I eat that all the time, so I'm not quite sure why that was low. Um, that wasn't really explained. Um, copper levels are down too, and copper is a micronutrient. Um, so, 
what else do we have? Okay, glutathione is what I was talking about. Like, our body makes, so this is what I learned. Glutathione, our body makes glutathione, and it makes it from certain amino acids. And I forgot what those amino acids are. Um, but it's an antioxidant. Yes. Okay, I might be confusing it with another one. Anyways, quote me on it later. Okay. Okay, this is also something that I, I learned recently. So I, le I had to, like, look into a lot of these and, like, Google all of these things that I'm getting on these tests. So my doctor um, that went over these tests with me, she told me I needed to cut out, like, seeds and nuts a lot because I was eating way too much. And I totally was because being raw and everything, like, kind of wanted that, like, crunch, that, like, kind of heavy, like, texture. So I, I ate a lot of nuts and seeds. Um, and I wasn't, yeah, so that, that, that definitely contributed to the unfavorable, un, like, mis, misbalance of omega-3 to omega-6. So, like, especially peanut butter, which I started eating afterwards, and I had a feeling that I shouldn't eat it, but I did, um, but definitely needed to cut out the peanut butter because the peanut butter had has way too much omega-6 and not enough omega-3 and that imbalance causes I think inflammation and other really bad stuff to happen so I'm just like all right whatever I don't need to be eating butter like peanut butters and nut butters anyways so I cut that out and I've actually felt a little better about it like I listen to my body and I see how like it reacts but you know like I I I can't, like, feel everything that's going on in my body, or I have, I'm not able to at this point in my spiritual evolution. Okay, um, see if there's anything else of value in this test. Dun, 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 I don't think there's anything else. It just kind of, like, goes over everything. Okay. This was, like... These were, like, optional ideas that was talked about of what I should, potentially. I'm just gonna, like, show that for novelty reasons, even though it's flipped. Sorry. So, um... It's just a, a big list of things that I should consider supplementing or for the time being, because, like, what this whole, like, test, these tests were supposed to do is, like, get me on the right track, and get me, like, address, address the, re like, just kind of, like, get me where I need to be, and then, I guess, figure out, like, what the problem is, um, B12 wasn't problematic, though, I didn't have any problematic B12, issues. B12 was fine. Um, yeah. It, it was suggested I take some B12, but like there wasn't, it wasn't in a bad spot. Dun, dun. Oh yeah. Toxic elements. So I also got tested for some heavy metals. Arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury. Totally not problematic at all. Actually, they're right here. So for a while I thought like maybe I had a heavy metal toxicity, but I don't. Unless there's a heavy metal that isn't on here, on this list. But, yeah, out of all these, I have more arsenic than anything else, but it's not, it's not even into the middle of, of the, of the graph, so. Right, so anyways, that was a, an ion profile test. Blood and urine. Tested... 
amino acids. F yeah, amino acids, 40. 40 amino acid profile, okay. So, the next thing that I want to go over is, we'll go, we'll go over this one. So, this one I think is the mycotoxin test. So, it tested for mycotoxins in my body. And I indeed have um, mycotoxins. Mold. That's, that's pretty much what it means. So I have mold in me. And it's not good. It's not good at all. Um, the names that they're giving me are aflatoxin, M1. A microtoxin produced by a mold species, Aspergillus. Aspergillus. Some of the most carcinogenic sub substances in the environment. <laughs> Aflatoxin. Susceptibility is dependent on multiple different factors, such as age, sex, diet. Um, main, so main sources, water damage in buildings. Can be found in beans, corns, rice, tree nuts, wheat, milk, eggs, meat. It can, like... I mean, it's just a mold. It can grow, it can just grow in poor situations. Like, if I eat something, like, it could be, it could have been found in something, because I was eating raw and everything, I could have been getting, I may have not washed my fruit well enough. You know, like, mold is everywhere. Um, but I also have, like, this immune issue. So, um, this is kind of possibly such a problem because of that. So the other one is, Ocratoxin, a nephrotoxic, immunotoxic, and carcinogenic mycotoxin. This chemical is produced by molds in the aspergillus and penicillin psyllium families. Exposure is done primarily through water damage buildings, can occur through contaminated foods, cereals, grape juices, dairy, spices, coffee, dried vine fruit. Can also come from in inhalation. Uh, exposure in water damaged buildings. I don't know. Who knows where I could have picked these things up. I could have gotten them like when I went there or I could have had them and they've just been growing over time. Uh, I did like sleep in a, a my tent was full of mold. I don't know. Um, when I was like working on a farm I was like sleeping outside in my tent and um, it's fair like when it started to rain at the end of the season Everything got mold in it. It was really bad. I had to throw out the whole tent, but I was sleeping in that for a while. So I could have inhaled some mold spores as well. And the other one, so the other mycotoxin is citronin. Dihydrocitronin. DHC. A mycotoxin produced by the mold genera aspergillus, penicillin, and monascus. Exposure can lead to nephropathy because of its ability to increase permeability of mitochondrial membranes in the kidneys. Um, exposure routes are through ingestion, inhalation, and skin contact. So there you go. I have some, I have some mold in my body. Not so good. I need need to get rid of that. <laughs> okay. Next. Da, da, da. Okay, I don't really know what to, to, to think of some of this, but someone out there listening might get some use out of this. Um, cortisol levels for AM, that was high. Melatonin for the AM is high. Androstendion in the AM was high as well. And estriol in the AM was high. Do I have trouble sleeping? Yes, sometimes. Sometimes, like, you know, I don't really know how to, I don't know, I don't know what it is. Um, so why we were doing these tests trying to, like, get an idea. Um, some of the things that I have, the bacteria, the mycotoxins, could be contributing to all the imbalances that I have. So, um, da da da. Actually, there wasn't a whole lot that I could say about that. It was just kind of like an overview. High levels of cortisol associated with pain, stress, sleep disturbance, 
hormone imbalances, insulin resistance, and decreased immune function. So this could this impaired con- cognition. This could be because of like the mycotoxins. So this could just be a result of that. Um, so we'll move on from that test. The next one is I got a GI panel. So they tested my GI tract, gastrointestinal tract. Um, do, 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 do. So no yeast was found, but I had a heavy bacteria load, a lot. So heavy growth, mixed negative flora, mo- moderate growth, uh, mixed gram positive flora. Yeah, mixed flora. So predominantly Citrobacter friundi heavy growth, and Klebsiella pneumonia, heavy growth, Enterococcus caseliflavus, moderate growth. So all of those are bacteria, bad bacteria. That's in my gut. So no bueno. Um, no salmonella, no Yersinia, no Proteus or Pseudodominus isolated. Anyways, that was the biggest thing with that. Um, no ova or parasites detected. That's good. Um, no Giardia. Awesome. Um, do, do, do. Normal levels. Normal, normal, normal. Um, okay, I don't know what this means. It says occult blood. (laughs) Occult blood up there. Sorry, it's backwards. Just for the novelty. <laughs> it says occult blood. No occult blood in stool. Negative. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but as someone who likes occultism, I find that offensive. That I don't have any occult in my blood. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alright, and then it tested me for a few things that I might have an allergy to. And I don't have an allergy to any of them. So, no allergy to soy, or milk, or egg. And no tapeworms detected. Cool. Um, I don't have a... I don't have a, um allergy to gluten so it says but my doctor said that nobody should be eating gluten it's not good for the human body so put that in your back pocket okay so i went over this in a previous video and you can see that on my youtube um but i went over the microbes that were detected in in my in my sample for um co-infections of lyme so that was this so i have lyme and lyme taxes the immune system for sure so i've got mycotoxins i've got bacteria and i've got lyme disease (laughs) so there's the reason my immune system is taxed i mean that's pretty obvious i mean (laughs) it's definitely not going to do me any favors if i leave it alone so i'm going to go over the uh the things that I need to do to fix it, but, um, but, what is this? This one is, so there's just, like, more, four, so my B12 levels could be better but they're not terrible. They could be better. My iron levels are fine. Um, my potassium was low. It's like at the border of being being low. It's like right on the low scale. Um, I don't know what MPV is, but that's high. It might say in the back. So. <laughs> no occult. <laughs> Um, vitamin D, we get our vitamin D from the sun, and, um, I tried to get a lot of sun, 
I'm just such a homebody and I'm like inside so much. But since I went to Florida, I saw the value in being outside in the sun. So I live on the West Coast. I live in Oregon and it's like pretty rainy here a lot of the year and very, very cloud covery. It's very overcast. So when there is sun, I'll go out. But in the meantime, I do have a vitamin D supplement that I take when every day that I'm not in the sun. It's actually really sunny today, and I meant to go outside and, like, split some firewood. Um, but uh, I needed to do this chemistry test, and then I had to do laundry, which I kind of was outside for, but not really in the sun. So that doesn't count. But my vitamin D levels were low. So I need to improve upon that. Don't know how long it takes for vitamin D levels to improve. But um, I'm taking that seriously. And especially with the whole COVID thing that happened. We all know now how important vitamin D is for our immune system. So yeah, I'm taking it seriously. Everyone should take it seriously. Because we're... We're supposed to be outside. We're humans. We're supposed to be outside and in the sun. So um, make sure you go outside and get some sun. Yeah, so what my doctor said was that because I was lacking antioxidants, I was aging faster. So like I said, when these tests were taken, I had stopped eating fruit because I was kind of in solidarity with my mother who was going through her cancer treatments and she wasn't supposed to eat fruit. So I stopped eating fruit so that I could kind of help her through her stuff. So... I was not eating fruit during this time. I'm eating fruit every day now. And uh, so yeah, I've, I, I'm taking, I'm, I'm trying to be productive with these tests. Like they're supposed to give me, you know, something to, to fix. Something to, so I, I can prove myself, improve my health. That's the whole point of these. So, oh, iodine. My iodine levels were low, which was weird I guess it wasn't that weird. I mean, like, during the time that I was there, I did have some seaweed. And maybe I wasn't eating enough before that. Um, I really like... I like seaweed, though. And I've definitely been eating it a lot recently, so I'm not too worried about my iodine now. Because um, there's a lot of iodine in seaweed. Right. Uh, that was it for that little test. At least that was significant. Okay. We have one more test. Okay, so this one, this one's more like spirituality related. So this is like this this test had to do with um, my meridians. It was it was a meridian test. So they took this like little device that was like a pen. I don't have a pen, but I have this. So they took like a little device and they like touched the places on my hands and my feet where like there were meridian points. And it went into the system and there was a reading and the reading came back as, okay, like this is, this meridian isn't working properly or this one is and this is how much it's working, et cetera, et cetera. So, at the end of them, like, taking, uh, doing the test of all my little meridians, um, they take, like, an average. They, they look at which ones had the most, which meridian had the most problems. Because they said that generally, if they fix one meridian, other meridians might also be fixed. Because, you know, things connect. If you have a problem in one place, you're going to have a problem in another place. Because that's just how the world works. That's the ecology of the human body. Um, so, they gave me a tincture that they infused with the frequencies of the foods, of the medicines that vibrated with that, that, that helped that meridian. So whatever meridian on my hands or fingers or whatever, whichever one of those was the worst off, um, they, inf they, they transferred that frequency into a little vial of alcohol. So I was to put them underneath my tongue like three times a day, like 10 drops. And that was supposed to align my meridian and get it up to speed. So those were all my tests. 
Um, and that, so that's, so the summary, um, I'm, I have some, uh, I have uh, immune issues. Something is taxing my immune system. We discovered that I have bacteria, mycotoxins, and Lyme disease, and all those together are terrible. All the, all the things that I have in my body, like, that's stressing my immune system out. The lack of antioxidants, which is found in fruit, so eat lots of fruit for your antioxidants, um, unless you have some disease that you can't do that, then discuss that with a professional, um, but antioxidants, if you don't have enough of those, makes you age faster, according to the doctor that I was talking to, so you need your antioxidants, and antioxidants also help the immune system in a lot of ways, um, so that's imp important. So, um, that's it. That's it for my tests. So now I wanted to talk about this book. I have notes. Okay, so this book, sorry that it's backwards again, but for the novelty of it, um, this book is The Mucusless Diet Healing System. It's by Arnold Errett. It's an it's a revised it's a revised version by Professor Spira. So Arnold Errett was the original author of the book, and Professor Spear came in and kind of made it easier for people to understand because Arnold Errett, he wrote it kind of particularly for the academic community. Um, th there's a lot of scientific jargon in it. I actually never have read the book, but um, Professor Spear, like, he has so many videos out, and I've, like, already listened to the audiobook of this. That's, I kind of, like, listened to the audiobook first, and then I, like, went over and I read this again. Um, there's so much information about this. So, like, the whole idea about the mucusless diet is that the foods that we eat can either create mucus in the body or they can eliminate mucus from the body. And mucus is not what we want because mucus can clause, cl clog up our systems. Um, so Arnold Errett, he goes through this book. Um, he goes through his, his, his uh, discovery of how he figured this out. Um, what foods does, does the human need to eat? Primarily, um, j just as a rough, like, a rough understanding of this book, he says all animal products create mucus in the body. So humans aren't supposed to eat animal products. But he also talks about, like, you know, certain nuts and seeds and grains. Um, the body just wasn't, the human body was just not meant to consume a lot of this stuff, but fruit. Prim predominantly, fruit is the one thing that humans can eat raw. Edible fruit, of course. There are actually certain fruits that are mucus forming, and he goes over that. I think avocado and coconut are one of them. It has saturated fat in it, too. So, um, those are mucus forming. Cashews are mucus forming. Um, there are other nuts and seeds, but generally, like, fruit should be the pre predominant food source for the human animal. So, um, he talks about that. And, um, Professor Spear kind of helps the reader understand it a little bit better. And so this was like, Arnold Errett was, he was alive during, I think, the 1940s. And so this concept of not eating animal products, like, it's been, it's already been talked about in the scientific community. And so he just kind of elaborates, like, why. Why the human body should not be eating animal products. But also, like, you know, what we should be eating. And why we should be eating it. Because of how it reacts chemically to our body. So, um... And he actually, like, gives a... Is it at the back of the book? So, somewhere in the book, he, like, talks about which ones. Like, what, what foods are mucus forming... Okay, so it says meat. All meat, so all meat is in a decomposing state, producing cadaver poisons, uric acid in the body, and mucus. Fats are the worst. Even butter is unusable for the human body. No animals eat fat. So 
that's what he says. Um, but this is also Professor Spira um, talking about this. So all fats are acid forming, even those of vegetable origin and are not used by the body, you will like, crave, and use them only as long as you can see mucus in the magic mirror. So he talks about the magic mirror. Those are like parts of the body that will show you that what you're eating isn't good, that there's something that you're eating that you shouldn't be. So I don't want to show my tongue, but, um, <laughs> but now I do. Uh, okay. So the tongue is, is a magic mirror for the body. So if you've ever like stuck out your tongue and you had that white coating on it, that's bad. That shows that there's something that you're eating that you shouldn't be eating. It's pretty much like your body trying to get out the toxins and it's coming out on your tongue, which is why you should always brush your tongue in the morning and, and your teeth because like your body is, is getting garbage out of your stomach and out of your body. So it's like it's coming out in the mouth and you don't want to re-swallow that because then you're just making more work for your, your body. You don't want to do that. Um, I'm glad I turned to this page. So milk also makes good glue for painting. Oh, uh, yeah, that's milk. He says that. <laughs> milk also makes good glue for painting. Cow's milk is too rich for adults and for babies. And it is plainly, I don't know what about the baby part, but it is, I mean, milk is for babies. So that makes the most sense. So um, it is destructive. A baby's stomach cannot, oh, this is, this is animal milk. So he's talking about animal milk, not milk from mothers. So that would make the most sense. Obviously, we're supposed to drink our mother's milk when we're infants. That makes the most sense. So, um, animal milk. Um, cow's milk. Uh, so a baby's stomach cannot digest what a calf can. If milk must be used, then add at least half water, some milk, sugar. So that's like in a survival situation. He's actually, like, Arnold Errett and Professor Spear are really open-minded. They understand that, you know, like... Not everybody un knows the chemistry of the human body. Not everybody is, like, on the same page with that. So there's actually a lot of recipes, uh, especially with Arnold Errett. He talks about transitioning to a mucusless diet. So, and he uses recipes with things that are mucus-forming. Um, but he, he uses them as a transition meal. So he's like, well, for people who who, you know, are having trouble eliminating mucus foods from the body, like animal products, like, start slowly, a little bit at a time. So, anyways, gonna read what he says about milk. Um, if milk must be used, add at least half water, blah, blah, blah. Sour milk, sour milk and buttermilk are less harmful. Cottage cheese, all kinds of cheese are highly acidic and are mucus formers. So, like, he'll be, like, yeah, so throughout the book, so it's really confusing because throughout the book he'll be like, okay, this is bad for you, but if you're going to use it, then you can use it like this. Because um, it's like, you know, the point is to be as least harmful as you can be in your transition. So um, cereals, it's, he says, cereals and all flour products form mucus and acid. The worst of them is white flour because it makes the best paste. Bran, gra gram, whole wheat, and, and rye bread are less harmful because they have lost their sticky properties. When well done or toasted and well baked, they are much less harmful. Raw cereals if toasted. Anyways, you can read this yourself. The book is really short, really easy to read, and you can probably buy the audio version if you want. Actually, you can listen to the audio version on YouTube. I found it on YouTube, so like you don't even have to pay money to educate yourself like this is so awesome like I, I loved listening to this when I was like driving around California um so potatoes um also mucus forming yep except sweet potatoes are almost mucusless so he gives you like levels of how mucus forming things are there's a big thing about nuts <laughs> and I'm not gonna read it all um I can read a little bit Nuts should be chewed together with some dried sweet fruits or honey, never with juicy fruits because water and fat do not mix. That's something that I should keep in mind. Never with juicy fruits because water and fats do not mix. And I do that too. Okay, so that's why trail mix is so awesome. So just remember your trail mixes. Um...
No scientific food value tables will convince you of the truth. You must sense it with your cleansed organs. How wrongly you are fooled into believing that you nourish and build up health and efficiency by these foods which are, in reality, destructive because they stimulate or, more truthfully, stop the elimination of your old waste until the day of reckoning comes when you are officially sick. Yeah. So he even says that... This is cool, hold on. He even claims, Arnold Errett claims that even disease, like sex, sexual diseases can be cured by changing your diet. Can be cured by changing your diet. Um, and fasting. I mean, I think so many things to be cured by fasting is amazing. Um, but he goes over that. He goes over certain diseases and such. Do, do, do. Okay, so. Okay. So, Arnold Errett, he also was very strange in the scientific community for his time because he believed, this is really, really awesome. I hope that you're listening to this because um, he, Arnold Errett believed that Caucasians, white people, white-skinned people, um, that the white skin, that the, the, okay, so you have to look it up yourself because I'm not, sci I, I don't have the scientific jargon for it, but he's saying that we're so congested with mucus that that's for the reason of our of the white skin. And he said that when he transitioned, Arnold Errett said that when he transitioned to a mucusless diet after like some time, um, he lost that pigment and he started getting darker skin. That people would say something about it and thought he was um, um, thought he was from another country. That he wasn't Caucasian. But he was. And he has just eliminated the mucus from his body. So the, anyways, that's a claim. And that's what Arnold Errett says. So you can look that up if you're interested. Um, I'm interested in it. So I thought it was really cool. Um, so Arnold Errett. Um, other things about the dude. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay. So, anyways, this book is amazing. <laughs> it talks about the mucusless diet. And so if you're interested in, like, eliminated, eliminating mucus-forming foods, this is a really good book. It was, uh, again, it's revised by Professor Spira. Um, and Professor Spira has a bunch of videos on YouTube talking about fasting, um, the mucusless diet and uh, recipes that you can use in your transition or all kinds of things. Like he talks about the science, he talks about the richness and rewards of eliminating mucus forming foods in the body, um, the disease prevention and curing of it all. Um, also goes over enemas. Um, Elimination is stopped. Okay. I'm going to read some of the things that I, like, highlighted in this book. Because if I, if I highlighted it, apparently it's really important. So, this... Okay, another mystery revealed. Okay, this is one of the greatest problems I've solved. And is that all experts who believe it is the food itself. Okay. And is one that puzzles all experts who believe it is the food itself. Okay, as soon as you refill the stomach with food, the elimination is stopped and you feel better. Okay, yeah, I must say that this secret, that this secret which I discovered is undoubtedly the explanation of why eating became a habit, a habit and uh, is no longer what nature intended it to be, namely a satisfaction, a compensation of nature's need of food. So I have actually experienced this. Um... So what, he, what it's saying, what Arnold and Dr. Beer, Dr. Spear are trying to say is that um, your body can't detoxify if you're putting food in it. Um, so if like you're eating something, like your body just stops like cleaning itself out and it begins to focus all of its energy on digestion and taking care of that food. So when you're eating, you're not detoxifying you are not helping your body detox. It's 
So, so if you want to detox, stop eating. That's why fasting is so amazing. Helps your body take care of those toxins. Um, and what it's saying is, oh my gosh, hold on. I I need it. I need to get a drink of water. (laughs) My poor throat. Okay, I'm almost done though. Okay, so like I said, elimination is stopped when you start eating. And I've actually experienced this because I was detoxing. I was like doing fasts and eating a lot of fruit. And um, what happened was is I had really bad detox symptoms. Uh, You have to be careful when you detox. And of course, you have to be careful when you transition to another diet especially if it's a healthier, healthier than, than your previous diet, because your body is going to detox at some point. Like your body is constantly working for you. So, um, anyways, um, when it gets that opportunity, particularly at night too, like your body is doing so much healing at night because you're not eating, right? It's like cleaning you out as best it can. So help it out. Don't eat mucus forming foods, but, um, but also, you know, give your, your, your body time to rest and, and, do some fasts here and there. But um, anyways, I experienced this because I had really heavy detox symptoms once and then I just um, started eating and I ate, I ate some like cooked food and then the detox symptoms, they went away because my body stopped the detox process, which was starting to get uncomfortable for me because I, I was probably detoxing too fast. I wasn't giving my body what it needed. It was just going too fast. So I stopped it and I ate some like cooked food and like the next, like, you know, over the next several hour, hours and then the next day, like I, the detox symptoms like went away. That's what happens. So if you want that like quick comfort, if you're detoxing too fast, like that eat something that you're not supposed to for a minute <laughs> just to kind of slow it down and then like, you know, just be very slow and take your time. Like you need to take time when you're transitioning diets, you need to take time when you're fasting and detoxing, like you need to go at your own speed. Of course, there are people who can like just go on a a one month, two month fast and they'll be totally fine and good for them. (laughs) Like some, not everyone's body is the same and not everyone's body processes toxins at the same speed, in the same efficiency levels, like, and some people have more diseases and other genetic issues and all these things, so don't compare yourself to other people's bodies, so that's what I have to say about that. I think I also had something else that I highlighted in here. Okay, if your blood stock is formed from eating the foods I teach, your brain will function in a manner that will surprise you. Your former life will take on the appearance of a dream and for the first time in your existence, your consciousness will awaken to the real self consciousness. I guess I just liked what he said there. If you simply supply the engine our bodies with the necessary water that is used up you ascend into a higher state of physical mental and spiritual condition i call this the superior fast okay i don't want to go into that because that is like another level of fasting i think he's talking about dry fasting oh no wait mucus lean recipes fruits and vegetables okay so if you want to like know more about this book if you want to oh even more Okay, more things about fasting. Um, Okay. More things about fasting. Anyways, if you're interested in this book, it's called um, The Mucusless Diet Healing System by Arnold Errett. This one's revised by Professor Spira. Again, like, the first time I found it, it was on YouTube. There's an audio version, so you don't even have to buy this. Go out and, like, listen to it. And if you, like, really like what it says, like, buy it for yourself and share it with somebody else. I think it's really awesome. I actually listened to the audio version first, and then I bought the book um, because I thought it was super informative because, I mean, they fill in Arnold Errett, Dr. Spear. They both both, um, fill in spaces that 
the conventional medicine and the modern medical community just doesn't fit in. They like want you to be like big pharma and the medical community as it is. Um, like they just they just want to make money. They they don't care about anybody but themselves and making profits. So I think it's really important to be educated, and that's why I sought this book out. I don't even remember how I f how I found it, but I think maybe I was looking up fasting. Anyways, I love this book. <laughs> I definitely suggest it to anybody who cares about their health and wants to understand how, um, at least get an introduction on how certain foods affect our body. Again, like, this is about a mucus, like, foods that are mucus forming or foods that are mucus eliminating. And, you know, you can kind of tell, like, you ever eat something and all of a sudden you, like, need to hack a balugi? It's hard to tell, like, was that food mucus forming, or is it helping you eliminate that mucus? Um, so, you have to read the book to better understand, like, which foods are which. And and then he kind of gives an explanation, like, he probably doesn't, Professor Spirit particularly doesn't go into, like, the chemistry of it. Maybe Arnold Ayer's original version does, but, like, it's a really great place to start so that you can have an introduction on, like, you know, think about everything that you're eating every day. Like, maybe cut out some things and see how you feel. Like, replace them with something else. Eat more fruit. Like, this book, I love it. 10 out of 10. Um, I learned a lot from this book, and it really helped me kind of bridge the gap on a lot of things that I was missing. Um, in my education when it came to nutrition and eating and food and stuff, so. Excuse me. So, that was it. Um, and now my throat is getting pretty terrible right now. So, um, I was really happy that I did this. I talked about my tests. I'm going to be uploading this on YouTube. And, uh... I went over the mucus diet healing system. I'll probably, like, pick at it in the future because there's so many great things in that book. But anyways, I have done what I wanted to do today, <laughs> which was talk about those things. So I will be eventually coming up with a schedule of when I'll be doing this. Like, I think I like doing Twitch, like, later in the evening, just because at the beginning of the day, I just like to get important things done, like schoolwork. So, um, when I do have a schedule, I will be posting it everywhere when I have, like, a solid schedule. So, look for that and check out my socials. And I'm having trouble right now. I don't know if, like, what are we in? Mercury? Is Mercury retrograde again? Because I'm having so many problems with technology. Like, I was able to easily be able to make, like, my laptop my second monitor. And, like, today I was like, nope. Nope. And I'm just like, but we've done this, like, a, like dozens of times before. How come you won't let me make this my second monitor? And it's just like, nope. Don't want to do it. Did the same exact thing, and it just... It just decided it didn't want to function properly, like the way it did before. And then I was able, I was able to get my phone to, like, actually, like, right off of the internet from my Ethernet cable that was plugged into my laptop. And it worked once. And I was like, cool, that's awesome. And, like, I... I switched the Ethernet cable back and tried it on my computer. It didn't work on my computer. I went back to my laptop and it was like, nope. I'm just like, but you did it just a second ago. I'm doing the same, the same steps, the same operation. And it's just like, nope. <laughs> so I'm a little frustrated. I don't know why technology is working against me right now. But I can't upload to TikTok. Can't upload to anywhere pretty much I mean like I can do some things but man is it difficult so anyways I'm gonna wrap this up because I would like to play some video games um and I'm gonna upload this on YouTube so thank you so much for listening and I hope you have a wonderful evening I hope you learned something and share what you've learned with others so live long and prosper